Hi, how are you? I'm Michelle, and this is my channel, Penny's Daughter Shares. I talk primarily about cross stitch. Sometimes we get some sewing and quilting projects in there. I have all cross stitch today, <laughs> which has been the case for a while. And I do have a sewing project on my work table here to get started on, and that's putting together a bit of a Halloween costume. Hopefully I'll be able to share that with you soon. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. If you've been here before, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been able to talk to you. I don't know how, time just seems to be flying by and Things just seem busy in my house where I can't make like the time to get a video together. And I don't know why that is, except that I never seem to have very much alone time at home. And that's when I tend to film my videos as well. Everyone else is out of the house. Well, I took advantage of these couple of hours that I have right now, that I'm all alone. <laughs> and I have plenty to show you. Let's see, since I talked to you last, I had a birthday. Jeff, my husband, had a birthday. Um, for those of you that don't know, our birthdays are only three days apart. Five years in three days. So let's make that clear. <laughs> and let's see, what else has been going on? Just back to school, although now that we're into October, um, I don't know that I can claim that as a busyness, but since my last video, it's part of it. And hmm. See, it's like, I don't know where my time's going. I think when I show you some of the projects I finished, though, we can see where I spent some of my time. Do you notice my hair's different today? Um, my hairstylist, she is trying to convince me that I have pretty curly hair, or fairly curly. That's never been the case in my life. And so she's encouraging me to put some stuff in it <laughs> and let it air dry and leave it curly. So I thought I'd give it a try today. Uh, usually I sort of stress myself out to make sure my hair is just right before I film a video and I need to stop being like that. <laughs> just get out here and have fun. And so this takes me a little less time with my hair, obviously. So it's not even all the way dry. Like my hair's so thick, it won't be dry by the end of the day. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Anyway, I'm giving it a try. Let's see if it works. It may drive me a little bit bonkers while we're filming here. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe you want to turn it into a game every time I touch my hair or mess with it. <laughs> kind of catches you up. I don't know. Like I said, I can't even picture why things have been so busy, but they have. So I am going to start with something that it came up. It sparked an idea. Uh, was a comment that I got on my last floss tube. And I think uh, because I had that finish parade, and so I showed a lot of finishes. And I talked about how many whips I'd had going into the into 2022 and um, all of those things. And so this person commented, I don't remember the exact words, and I didn't write it down, but something to the effect of being a monogamous stitcher, and she doesn't think that she could possibly have so many whips because that would drive her crazy. Well, I understand that. <laughs> and I also understand wanting to have several whips going at once. So 
that just gave me an idea of something I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit really quick that you may agree with me on or maybe you don't. I don't know. But if you want to share any thoughts you have on whether you're a monogamous stitcher or maybe you have a bunch of whips, share them in the comments below and we can kind of talk about it a little bit. And I'll try to share some of that next time I meet with you and tell you what I hear. Or, and also, obviously, you're able to read through the comments yourself too, so you can see what other people are saying. But I was always a strictly monogamous stitcher. Like, you had to finish one project before you started the next. And honestly, I wouldn't even have projects kitted up ahead of time. I would only have one project going. And when I was getting close to finishing that or when it was finished, then I would shop for my next project. Well, that all changed once I found Instagram and Floss 2. <laughs> and I think, I'm pretty sure that I've had conversations with many of you that everyone sort of, or a lot of people have that same sort of experience. Um, so anyway, until I found Instagram and Floss Tube, and then in 2021, I decided I wanted to try to do Mania. And what I decided to do was have a new start for every day that month of May in 2021. And I ended up with, I don't remember exactly how many starts I had, let's say 32-ish because there was a couple days that I started more than one thing on the same day because they sort of paired together. Anyway, so I had all these starts and then I did a whip parade, you know, at the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022. And I had, let's see, I, did, I showed in my whip parade, I'm reading my notes here because I can't remember everything. <laughs> I had 30 whips that I showed at the beginning of this year. Um, and sometimes that makes me feel really overwhelmed to have that many sort of open projects because I like to finish. I like, I feel more accomplished, right, when I'm finished, like when I just started. But on the flip side, I also figured out during Mania that I like to do several starts sort of all at once and set them aside because then later on when I want to pick up something new to work on because I finished something or I'm just tired of working on something, I can pick something new up. It's already started. I can pick it up and go. I don't have to find my center or figure out that I'm going to start in the upper left corner and where I'm going to start. and how that's all going to work. You know, everything's all together and I can just pick it up and go. And let's see. So I wrote this down because I wanted to tell you all of my thoughts. And I wanted to make sure I was covering this. And so I had all these whips. Well, I have figured out with when I showed you all the finishes I had last time, and showing you what I'll show you today, I'm figuring out that I really, I tend toward picking a project up and stitching on only that project until it is finished. Now I tend to, it's a little different here and there, depending on what's going on. Um, but I also have found a way to feel a freedom that, and I don't know how else to explain it, but that I can then pick up something different and work on if I'm not particularly happy with the current project that I'm stitching on. Um, if I'm not feeling a, a full enjoyment, which I am all about the joy with stitching. This is fun, it's supposed to be fun, and that's what it's about for me. And if I'm not having fun, then I really want to make a change so that it goes back to being fun. And this is a really big deal for me, but I've 
been able to learn to give myself permission to move on, to change projects, to put something away for a while and be okay with that. And so that leads to the number of whips I have now. And without intending to, I didn't start out my year going, I'm going to get my number of whips cut way back. I didn't really intend to do that, but that's kind of what's happened. Um, and I'm not sure why, but it's been fun. So I figured out, I looked it up before I got on here, is that, like I said, I had about 30 whips in my whip parade and at the beginning of the year. I'm really going to count that there were 25 that I intended to finish, whether or not it's this year or we'll say soon. And when I say soon, I mean this year, maybe into next year. I have five other projects that I kind of set aside that are whips that I've started, but for some reason I'm not particularly happy with them. And it depends on, it varies from the type of fabric I was trying to stitch on to, and maybe I want to switch the fabric before I stitch it, or or I really loved it, but then now I've found other things that I love more. So I've kind of set those aside. So let's say I had 25 whips at the beginning of the year that I counted <laughs> as whips. And I am currently at seven whips, <laughs> which is a tremendous difference. And two of those seven are new starts within the last couple of months. And I'll be showing those in a little bit. So, you know, I cut it from 25 down to five. I'm pretty excited about that. And I've done a few that are pretty big. Um, let's see. So back to being able to drop something because it's not as much fun and picking up something else. Like I said, that freedom I feel is so enjoyable. Or it's a new thing for me because I am, that's really awesome for my type A rule following personality, <laughs> which I'm not sure if that's all been totally clear through these videos or not, but I am 100% so that. <laughs> and I now have three children that are that way. So sometimes it gets a little hairy in our house. <laughs> um, all this being said, uh, let's not discuss how many projects I have kitted up because that kind of goes along with the collecting part of this hobby that I have. And I enjoy kitting projects up. But we'll s let's just say there's at least 50. When I'm going to stitch all of them, I'm not sure yet. But maybe for 2023, I'll make some goals and figure out some of those things. So that's where we're at. I just wanted to update you on the number of whips I have and see what your thoughts are. You know, how are how do you feel about, are you a monogamous stitcher? Do you have a lot of whips? Do a lot of whips overwhelm you? Or does it make you happy to have them? And to be honest, I may start calling, I may have not just a whip grouping, I think I might start a new start list. And so that would mean that maybe I'll decide at some point here that I wanna start a number of the kits I have and I'll have some new starts and a list of them and then I can pick them up when I'm ready to work on those. I don't know, we'll see. That's all part of this whole freedom thing and trying to let go of being such a type A rule following person 
who has to be very strict with herself. <laughs> and I'm trying to relax into this and have fun. All right. So like I said, share your thoughts down below if you'd like. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe if you like listening to me talk. <laughs> and we are going to then move on to my finishes. And I have some big ones. So the first one, I will start by putting a picture up here for you. This is Florographica, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, from Jan Hicks Creates. You can find it in her, a PDF of it, in her Etsy shop. I will have a link down below in the description box for this chart um, because, this makes me so excited, um, Jan saw my stitching and enjoyed it so much that she asked if she could include a photo of my stitch in her Etsy listing for the chart. So if you'd like to check that out, go ahead and head over and check it out. Or if you want to buy the chart, which would be even better for Jan, um, you can head over to her Etsy and pick it up. All right. So without further ado, let's let me show you my finish. And this is a big one, so we'll have to back up a little bit here. Here it is. And I'm gonna try to hold it. Like I said, it's big, so there we go. I stitched this two over two. So that's two floss threads over two linen threads on 32 count. This is 32 count Belfast Linen Natural. It's a Zweigart, so it's just a basic sort of fabric. I really enjoy stitching on this. And let's see, I used all the called for colors except for one slight adjustment, and that's in these purplish colors, uh, those petals and the other flowers, like down here and up at the top, those were called for in Classic Color Works Bunny Honey. Yes, got that name right. And that color by itself wasn't quite enough contrast with my fabric to show. So what I did was I pulled, um, I went and found the DMC equivalent that Jan gave for Bunny Honey. And again, that was still a little light, but there was a shade darker. And I don't remember if the number went up higher or down lower in DMC, but I used DMC 451. So how I stitched those purple pieces is I used one strand of Bunny Honey and one strand of DMC 451 to give it just enough contrast so that it shows on my stitching. So that was the main difference. Um, obviously, and then the fabric is different than what her model was stitched on. Uh, the other big difference for this particular stitch, which you can't tell right now from me, is I got to a point where I was using my Q-snap and I was having a really hard time stitching with it. And I think it was because it was so big and just awkward on trying to move my arm around the Q-snap to do my stitching. So I pulled my fabric out of the Q-snap and I started stitching in hand, which I have tried once or twice before and I usually just get way frustrated. I ended up really enjoying it on this piece. Now there were times I would tear a few stitches out because I wasn't as happy with how the, fat, the floss was laying and such, but overall I was really happy with it. Now, 
Using the sewing method, I used a little, but mostly it was poke and stab still just in hand without the cue snap. And I'm hoping that I can continue to try to work on that and develop more ability to be able to stitch in hand and even using the sewing, sewing method. But I'm also finding that certain fabrics, that's really frustrating for me. <laughs> and I'll explain that shortly. <laughs> um, and then I think if you're new here, you don't know this. Anyone who's been watching, I uh, initial and date all of my pieces and I always try to find a way to make the initials fit and look good, uh, almost part of the design, if you will, whenever possible. Well, in this case, because this is technically a sampler because it's large and has a number of different motifs on it, I was able to incorporate my initials in the date, but it make it look like it's part of the piece and was intended. So down here in the lower right, I stitched the year and that is stitched full cross stitches and using two floss threads over two linen threads. And then here in the lower left, I charted my initials. Sorry, there we go. I think I you can see that pretty well. And let me double check because I couldn't remember. Okay, yes. Those are stitched with, they're over one. I'm pretty sure I used one strand of floss, stitched one over one, but I did full cross stitches. Because this is 32 count, so, you know, it's a little larger weave of fabric than a 40 count, so it was a little, not so hard to do that. But, yep, so I charted those up. Um, and... I used letters and numbers from Blackbird Designs. And if you're interested in what projects or what, yeah, what charts I took those from, drop me a question because I'm drawing a blank at the moment and I can look it up for you. I know that I did look at the Oh, no, I can't remember. <laughs> so now I'm going to try to say. Like I said, it's Blackbird Designs, letters and numbers. And uh, I just put them together in a way that I could make it work for, you know, especially my initials because I stacked the two M's on top of each other and then made the C nice and big. So, yeah. So that is... Florographica from Jan Hicks Creates. And I plan to frame this. I am working on getting a frame ordered. I have not ordered a custom frame before. So um, I found someone on Etsy that I am discussing the options with and to figure out exactly the correct size and everything. I'll frame it myself once I get the frame here, but we gotta make sure and get the right color and the right size and everything to make it work for me. But that is my plan. So that is a great big whip to get off my list. This was really fun to stitch and I love it so much now being able to see it finished. All right, are we ready to move on? I feel like I showed that to you for a really long time, <laughs> but I had lots to share about it. All right, so, hold on one second. Ooh, that's a lot of talking. Makes you thirsty. <laughs> 
My next finish is another big, big one. And here is the chart. It's what remains from Blackbird Designs. Um, so i not sure if you know, I think I've explained this before, but um, I stitched this along with several other people and it, the hashtag was a mother's love sale, S-A-L. Um, I, and once I was invited to do that, I decided that I would stitch this in honor of my mom. And to give you a little bit of background, I, and I know I've explained part of this before, but um, she's been gone a really long time. And actually, I, so, when I started this, I started it on December 28th of 2021, last year. That was the 24th anniversary of my mom's passing. And when I started it that day, my goal was to have it finished and framed by December 28th of this year, which will be 25 years without her. And, <laughs> more than half my life without my mom. <laughs> Woo. Um, so, it's a really big deal. And when I got Flora Graphica done, and I had been stitching on that for Sampler September and wanted to finish it for Sampler September, and then I decided, well, I still have Sampler September time, and I wanna work on this, and maybe I can get this done. And I did get it done during Sampler sampler September. So let me show you my finish. Here it is. And then I can give you details while I'm showing it to you. I stitched this with the called for flosses. And I stitched on 36 count Fiber on a Whim, which is the color Wheat, W-H-E-A-T, Wheat. Um, and I think the color is showing up pretty true in my camera here. It's quite yellow-ish, but um, I just thought it was beautiful with these particular floss colors. I mean, and come on, it's a Blackbird Designs. It's just such a beautiful chart. Uh, let's see, all the called for colors. I stitched one floss thread over two linen threads. And the chart, I don't remember, but the chart itself uh, had the year. I think I just had to change it uh, to update it to be 2022. And I can't remember if both initials were on the original chart or only one, but so I have both of my initials. And um, and then the other thing I added for my mom is down here in this lower left corner, and I'll zoom in on that for you. Those are her initials and the years of her life. Now all of that is stitched one over one. Her initials, I did um, full cross stitches. Her years of her life are back stitched, but still over one. And it just, I don't know. I, I think that turned out really good and it's, most important to me to understand and remember that that's what that is. Obviously my family will understand it. So as time goes on, I guess, but isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I am also going to frame this. I am also working on ordering a custom frame for this. And so I will be able to have it fully done by 
December 28th and hanging up. I just wish I didn't have to celebrate that. It's not celebrating. It's celebrating her life, <laughs> not celebrating that day. Um, but yeah, so I just, I love the house. I love the color of the house. I love this big flower. I love this peacock. The border was kind of a pain to stitch, but it's so pretty when you get done. And you know, the satin specialty stitches and the Smyrna crosses, the whole thing. I just really love the whole thing. And I can't wait to frame it and hang it up. So yes, that is two big finishes in Sampler September. Uh, oh, just, I am working on the frame for what remains. I am working on something that reminds me of sort of a penny border that we, you know, you could stitch. And I hope that that is what ends up working out to represent her name, Penny, but to have a frame that, you know, looks like pennies, reminds me of pennies, I think will just set it off just right. Okay, so I have a third finish. And here is the chart. This is Plum Street Samplers Penny Autumn. And maybe you've noticed it in the background hiding there. <laughs> is my finish. Okay. Let me bring it a little closer. There we go. All right, ta-da! Oh, so I was supposed to talk about Q-snaps, stitching in hand, and having gone back to Q-snaps and using them after Florographica and stitching so much of it with without a Q-snap. Like I said, what remains, I stitched on 36 count, and there was something about the count of that fabric and possibly the way I started stitching on it when... And I don't, for some reason, I was really struggling with trying to stitch it in hand on that count. And I have a feeling it was because it's 36 count and I'm, 36 count is just not my sweet spot. 40 count is, or go down to 32 and 28. 36, I struggle with my stitches looking really good. All of that to be said, this is also stitched on 36 count. <laughs> and this is on 36 count Wren from Picture This Plus, which I love, love, love the color of this fabric. It's just lovely. 36 count, not my favorite. I used all the called for flosses. I stitched one floss thread over two linen threads. And I also used the Q-snap on this particular piece. Again, it just, I couldn't get comfortable with stitching in hand on it. And I think that I'm figuring out, I'm probably gonna have an adjustment period here where I have things that I've started on you stitching and I started them with the Q snap. And then when I pull it out, that I'm not as easily, it's not as easy for me to transition to stitching in hand when I had previously been stitching with the Q snap, where as I start some other new things that maybe if I start right out by stitching in hand on the project, that it'll flow a little better. It's just gonna be a trial and error and back to that whole type A, follow rules, 
have a plan, stick to it thing, going with the flow is a little hard for me. <laughs> so we'll work on it. Uh, let's see. So I told you, call four colors, stitched one over two, 36 count, and used the Q-snap for it. I love the fabric color. I love the floss colors. This is so beautiful. We saw the name of the chart. It's Penny Autumn. You can probably guess why I picked it out originally to start stitching it. <laughs> so just another entry in that Penny cross stitching collection. <laughs> and the border turned out awesome. It's, I was working on it. I liked it fine, but it's once I, so I stitched the centers last. And as I stitched around and added the centers, it really brought it to life. I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, initials on this one, I worked into the corners. I used back stitching. It's over one. And there are my initials. And here's the date. So I think that worked out really cute. And you are probably going, okay, Michelle, how are you going to FFO this one? I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a pin pillow. And I'm pretty sure it's going to coordinate with Pretty sure it was called Penny Pumpkin from the Scarlet House. So I think they would look great together and being finished similarly, and then I will display them together. So yeah, that is my third and final finish. All right, let's talk about, let's see, I have two whips to share with you. And the first one, I will need to show a picture here. This is from Jeanette Douglas, and it is, she calls it the mini bouquet treat sale, stitch along. And she is releasing one of the bouquets each month of this year. And so if you would like to pick up and join in on stitching this, you still can, you can, go to her website. I'll have a link down below for you if you decide you want to join it. And so here is my progress. I'm actually finished through October and I have all the borders done. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think last time that I probably showed you up through August so here is September. I don't know if, I, hopefully I'm not blowing that out or making it not focus. And then, and then here is October. I love the colors of October, but fall is my favorite. <laughs> And I am stitching this using the called for flosses. I'm stitching on 32 count gray gingham or gray check. It depends. You find, and it's from Zweigart. Uh, you can find it lots of places. And I have treat, but I've treated this with Primitive Gatherings Instant Antique Spray. So here's the back where you can see that's a very white. So the original fabric is very white and gray and I wanted it more prim and a little grungy, <laughs> which is a little more my style. And I wanted the check to be a little less or a little more subtle, right? Than so starkly different. So I thought that worked out really well. 
So I have just two months left, November and December. And as I get those, then I will put in some initials and the year. My plan, I think, is there's going to be something here between what will be act or what is October and what will be November, and then something here, which will be between November and December, down towards the bottom, but inside the border. But I have to see how the bouquets lay out on the chart before I can chart my initials and get them on there. But that's my plan. And then I'm pretty sure I'll frame this when I get done. Um, unless I come up with another, mm, I do have one other sort of wall hanging idea that's a possibility, but we'll see when I get done. But yeah, so that's where I'm at on this. I feel like I'm forgetting to tell you something. Mm, oh. If I am, ask the question and I'll answer. <laughs> I did, so, I don't remember exactly how much of this I stitched in the Q-snap, I do know for sure that I stitched September in hand and October in hand. Those I stitched after I had uh, finished Florographica. And so this is one of those pieces where I'm able to start getting some transition in there and working on it. And I don't think you can tell a big difference on how I stitched between those two and the others that I've done. So yeah, like I said, you can hop on over to Jeanette Douglas's website and gather this up for yourself if you'd like. All right, and then I have one more whip to share. And I'll start by showing you that I keep it in this adorable bag that I love. Here's the better picture of the fabric. And you can see it's from Painted Leaf Company. Uh, this was from last year, so I doubt that they have this fabric available anymore on their in their Etsy shop. But I love this, and I love this extra small bag to keep my floss in. So I wanted to show that. Here is the chart. It is called Brace Face from Raise the Roof Designs. And I, is this out of print? I think. I happened to see it on one of the Stash Unload groups on Facebook and fell in love with it because Vivian and Justice both got braces in August. And I saw this not long before they got their braces. And I said, I have to stitch that in honor of them getting braces. So I, and I think it is adorable. There are butterfly buttons on it and I don't plan on adding those. I'm gonna keep it more Halloween style. And I feel like the butterflies make it just more not so seasonal. Does that make sense? Okay. This one, I, you'll see, I am also stitching in the Q-snap. I tried to do a little in hand and I'm not sure. I might be able to now with the fill-in, but I just haven't pulled it out of the Q-snap to do that yet. So this is where I'm at. So I almost have the whole pumpkin outlined. And I am stitching this on, let me get the names right here. It is 40 Count Bird Cage from XJU Design. I love, love, love her fabric. I love the texture of it. I love the col her colors and her modeling and all of it. 
I just love it. And I like this darker color for this particular piece. And let's see, I am stitching with about half of the called for and about half of my own choosing. So the orange and the pumpkin, I did some swaps because I wanted some variation in the color of the pumpkin and it, the fill-in for the pumpkin called for a DMC. So, and I didn't want it just all solid. And the, let's see, what else did I swap? And then the other kind of main swap is inside these leaves, I swapped out for a different color. And I mean, this is an older chart. I don't remember the year on it. I feel like it says 2006 on it somewhere. Yeah, I guess that right. <laughs> it does, it says 2006. So some of the called for colors, I feel like maybe they are different, right? When they're those over dyed flosses, the variations in the dye lots change and they definitely change over the years. So that's why I made some, a couple of updates or changes for what I felt. Plus my fabric color is different than what they used in their model. So I think that it worked out. I finished using all the Krynik and got the braces done and I'm so glad that I did that already. It wasn't very fun to stitch. Um, and I don't know if I've used Krynik. I feel like I have used Krynik before, but I want to say that I used it more of in a back stitching type way rather than a cross stitch. And I didn't remember it being that difficult to stitch with, but I don't know, it was a pain. So, but it looks so cool. So it was worth the, the pain, and I, but I'm just glad it's done. <laughs> that part. So yeah, so I just gotta work on that. I, this is probably the stitch that I'll stick with until I get it finished. Because like I said, Viv and Justice both got braces and I want it done for them. And I think I will probably, well, for sure I'm going to put the year on it and then Somewhere on here, I think I'm going to put their initials so that, you know, in a couple different spots. Because I just think that would be fun as like a memory of um, how I, or why I stitched it. And just a memory of, and yeah, I, I'm at a loss of words here. I On another, or on a related note, I don't know if any of you have had kids that have gone through braces. But I am shocked at how fast their teeth have moved. And I just didn't know they would move that quickly. I had braces myself. I don't remember my teeth moving that quickly. Of course, it's done differently than when I got them, you know, 150 years ago. So <laughs> it's a little different now. But yeah, so it's working well. And I'm really excited to see where we get when they get all done. All right. That catches you up on what I've been working on. What do I intend on working on? Well, I think if you've watched me before, you know, I talk about plans and then I change my mind or I don't get to it or I don't get to all of it and only get to some of it or whatever. Uh, one thing I know for sure I'm going to get to is you can see the box right there. It's really hard to point this way. <laughs> right here, my box for Friend Stitch, which is this coming Saturday on October 15th. And so I have not opened my box and I won't. I like the surprise and I don't mind waiting. So, um, you know, we could have gifts under our Christmas tree wrapped for a month ahead and I wouldn't even touch them because I just like to wait for the fun. That's, I know, I'm probably weird. <laughs> so that's one thing I know I'm going to be doing is attending Friend Stitch. Whether or not any of the stitching gets done, we'll see. 
<laughs> um, so there's that. I do, I am really wanting to do some FFO stuff and some sewing kind of things. So I think I'm feeling mm, a little more calmed down from how busy we've been and just other things going on where I just didn't feel like I could get a big project out and lay it all out in my craft room and and then not be able to get back to it right away. Like I tend to like to get those things out and work on them until they're done. Even if it takes, you know, a few days or whatever it is, but just to be able to have that out all at one time. But we'll see um, what that means or how I'll make it work. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so I think that I'm going to call that a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. And like I said earlier, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe down below. Um, and also, I'm going to try to manage my time better <laughs> and carve out time better for my floss tube because I miss it when I'm not doing it. It's sort of like I'm not chatting with my friends is how I feel. Like I'm missing my friends and hanging out and catching up. And let's be honest, you guys will listen to my cross-stitching discussions and feelings and ideas. And you choose to do that. And no one else in my family really wants to listen to me all the time. I mean, they'll humor me. They'll be like, oh, cool, you finished that. But the in-between stuff and all of the details, yeah, they're not so interested. So I like having you guys to share that with. So thank you for sharing your time with me. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs>